Good morning. If you're watching the replay, I'm Corinne Crabtree from fitandfat.com. I lost 100 pounds, oh my gosh, 14 years ago. And now each Wednesday, I come live on Facebook to talk to my people, my PMP groupies, my PMP tribe members. And then this is also on the replay of the podcast, Losing 100 Pounds with Fit and Fat. We have new episodes that drop on Fridays with my co-host, Kathy. And then on Saturday, you get the replay of this. So if you miss me live, you can always catch it in the podcast. So make sure you subscribe over on Losing 100 Pounds. If you want to type it in, find it easy, you can go to fit, P-H-I-T, dot click slash podcast. So good morning, everyone. We're going to talk today. You know, I honestly, I, I'm going to have to tell you guys the truth. Let me give you a little update on me. And then I'll give you some shout outs from some of the groupies and stuff. But man, I'm having a rough day. I um, <laughs> I tell you guys, I often wake up like depressed and stuff. And it's here. <laughs> so I made myself get up this morning. I put on the makeup. I'm dressed cute. I will say I'm dressed very cute. But it's just one of those days where it was struggle bus to get started. I just wanted to kind of, like, I didn't shower yesterday. <laughs> I broke my, my, well, I actually did shower. That's a lie. I showered at 8 o'clock last night. Um, so, I got up yesterday. I don't know if anybody's been following me, but I've got a sprained quad. And it has been, like, legit on fire for days. And so, um, it started up last Friday it was so painful that I stood during a meeting for two days. Man, I'm a mess. I can't even talk about my fucking quad without crying. <laughs> this is what happens, though. When you have depression, it's like it shit sneaks up on you sometimes. And you don't... It's not that it sneaks up on me. It's more like I don't realize it's coming. It's like little things will be bothering me. I'll just shove them underneath the rug. I'll pretend that things are okay. I won't take care of myself like I need to. And then the next thing I know, it feels like it's very heavy. So anyway, um, today's just a heavy day. So I apologize that you're getting your live this week with me just being a fucking hot mess. <laughs> but anyway, so last, last Friday, I was at a, a meeting for two days and I was speaking at the end of um, the second day. And... Um, I did something to my leg. Like, I thought I had bursitis. I thought I tore my hip up. At one point, I thought I messed my back up because I just, I got to where I couldn't hardly sit. Like, I can actually sit today. This is the first day that I've actually been able to sit without dying. <laughs> and so, uh, for two days, I just about stood. And then, um, I've been letting it rest. I haven't been exercising and stuff. And uh, it's getting better. So, that's good. But, Oh my gosh, like just being in pain, not sleeping good, the fucking weather's been so cloudy. In Nashville, we've been having like epic rain. It just feels like, you know, all the things come together. And so sometimes I think that's how we feel in even weight loss. Like we want to lose weight so bad. And every time we start, guess what happens? All the things happen at one time and, it's, and you feel like you just break with your food. So... Well, I just wanted to kind of like start off with that because I was sitting here thinking, you know, what has helped me through the years? Because I was thinking life was not perfect when I was losing weight. And it wasn't like it was everything went smooth for 18 months and I never had problems. And so what was the difference? And then I was thinking about that this morning because I was like, so I haven't exercised in a few days. I was fucking shocked at it literally took me a hot second of being out, of, like, I mean, 14 years of exercising pretty regularly now, and four days of not exercising, and this morning, I had to really talk myself into going into my gym to lift shoulders. I've been cleared from the doctor to, I can lift, I can stretch and do yoga, and I can slow walk, and I had to con myself into going in, in there and doing it, so it's just like a combination of things, and I was sitting there thinking, you know, life was never perfect. I still had depression through all that. So what was the difference? And I really think for me, the difference has just been having like such awareness of always meeting myself where I'm at. And that's kind of why I wanted to talk today about so many of us when we start losing weight or we want like, just even if you want to like 
start your own business or you want to you know, get out of your depression or whatever. We always think that we have to start at where the, the end version of us is gonna be, the perfect version or something. And what we forget is that we're always going to be meeting ourselves where, at, where we are at, like every single day of the journey. It's not gonna be like you're gonna lose some weight and then suddenly never have to meet yourself where you're at. You are always gonna have like setbacks. You are always gonna have um, times where you don't, um, you know, like, like right now, I just feel like I'm just having to meet myself where I'm at. You know, there is the version of me that you all usually see, which is like kicking ass, ranting and raving, preaching, you know, on fire, all that kind of stuff. And then there's the version of me that's like today that just isn't that version. You can obviously tell I don't like it when I'm not that version. <laughs> but this is the thing. It's like you just have to make a choice every day to meet yourself where you are for that day. Because if you if you resist that and you put like some kind of weird ass expectation on yourself that you have to be something else or whatever, you end up hosing yourself. You end up going backward. You end up doing stuff that you can't keep up with. You end up like forming these habits that you can't just have a shitty day and it be okay to have a shitty day. Like when I was overweight, my shitty days meant I needed to eat. I needed to escape it. I needed to like, there was like shame around feeling bad or there was, I don't know, just like a lot of bullshit around it. I hope my mother's not on here. If my mother's off here, she's going to be worried and <laughs> calling me. My mom watches these often. Oh my God, I feel like I wasted makeup today. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you guys. But the thing is, is that you just always have to be willing to be where you are. So for those of you who are trying to start losing weight, like if you're trying to lose your 100 pounds and you really want to do this and stuff, the important thing to always remember is that like where you are today, there's nothing wrong with that. If today starts with leaving the special sauce off of the Big Mac, that's where you are. That's where I was. I looked like, you know, guys, when I tell you my rock bottom story where I've like, Chris comes in and I'm like, I gotta do something. This is probably what I looked like. I am pretty sure I looked this amazing and this emotional. And it was like, so that day, the only way for me to move forward was to realize I could not start with throwing everything out of the house that I had been like eating. I could not start with hiring a trainer that was going to kick my ass. Like I was not going to like overhaul my life overnight. I was going to figure out what I could do that day so I could just keep going and keep moving forward and stuff. And sometimes that means you start with all the ice cream like I did. I started with walking and I did not give up the ice cream. You just are always going to need to be able to have the courage and the tenacity and the determination to start where you are. And you need to like fight the version of you that wants to be perfect, that wants to do it all right, that wants to put crazy ass expectation on you because she's just so afraid. I think that's the big thing is that when we try to start way before like i coach all of my clients all the time on the realistic plan why is the realistic plan going to help me lose weight like how am i going to eat a big mac today and lose weight it's like it's not the big mac and the calorie deficits i'm trying to teach you how to quit fearing that you won't lose weight i'm trying to teach you how to be very aware of just who you are and to quit hating yourself for who you are like, there's so many things that I teach through such basic tools. I was telling somebody the other day, I think when we did our overeating, this every month my um, tribe, they get a course from me. And I was talking to them in the overeating course about, you know, why I do, like, teach four basics. Like, my fucking weight loss stuff is not fancy, guys. It's not supposed to be. I can teach you to drink water, sleep. It's all in the podcast. I give all of that away for free. Every one of you hear the four basics, but those four basics are so simple. When, just eat when you're hungry, write, write what you're going to eat today down. I don't care what it is, but you're going to write it down and you're going to drink water and you're going to go to sleep. 
That alone is enough to bring up all of your bullshit. Those four things will trigger if you're a perfectionist. Those four things will trigger if you're fucking afraid you won't lose weight. Because I can't tell you how many of my girls have a hard time making a realistic plan. Not because a realistic plan's hard, but because they're so afraid they won't lose weight. So then they make no plan and they just keep doing what they're always doing. That's like, that's what I need you guys to understand. You have to be courageous enough to shut down the negative thinking, to shut down all of the doubt, to shut down all that. It's like, it can be there, but it has to be second to your courage to start where you are. I tell people all the time, it's like, thank God I did not listen to the person who was sitting on the couch like this, so afraid she'd never lose weight. She got to come with me, but I didn't listen to her anymore. I just decided I, I have to be stronger than that. Like I have to start where I am. I have to quit not starting because I'm afraid. Like that was just some bullshit. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I just, you know, I think one of the biggest mistakes that I see all of you make is continually repeating over and over again the same exact mistake, which is starting where you think you should be instead of starting where exactly where you are. It, the best thing to do is to just start where you're at. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to, oh look, <laughs> it's me. I just saw myself pop up on the screen in the comments. Um, if you have any questions, if you'll ask now and you'll do Hashtag ask. Kathy Hartman is our one of our coaches in PMP Tribe. If you don't know, she's the co-host of the podcast. She's going to be feeding them to me today. We're going to try something new so I can keep up with some of the questions. She's going to feed them to me in um, on my computer so I can answer them. I'm going to try to get my shit together for you guys and not be like hopefully be more motivational than I am just a sappy ass today. So let me give you a couple of uh, groupie shout outs. If you don't know what a groupie is, a groupie is someone who listens to the podcast and they belong to our free Facebook group. So if you go to the free course over on fitandfat.com, P-H-I-T hyphen N hyphen P-H-A-T dot com slash sign up now, you can sign up for my free course and then you'll be invited to join the Facebook group. Um, Bridget Owen, she says, sometimes I get frustrated with the scale and I feel like I work so hard for nothing. I try my best not to entertain those thoughts. My best friend sent this to me. My mind is blown. The first picture, 2017, two months before I changed my life. The second picture is yesterday. And she has lost a fuck ton of weight. And I think that is so key because it's very easy for us to get caught up, guys, in thinking that we're not making progress. Quit using the scale is the only indicator of progress. Look, like, I like for people to measure their progress in their behaviors, to measure their progress in, like, what are the, like, the things I'm tracking? Like, how often am I showing up for my plan? How often, um, how many days in a row have I only ate when I was truly hungry? How many days in a row have I gotten my sleep? Like, I think tracking that stuff is always way more important than tracking your weight. Because when you get very focused on tracking your behaviors versus just your numbers, you will see a bigger change in the numbers. When we get overly consumed with the numbers, then what we do is we start getting all of our feelings and our emotions tied up in there. And the feelings and emotions are like if it's not behaving the way you think it should, then you end up donkey ass eating, you blow off some of those behaviors and stuff, and though that affects those numbers. The behaviors are always where everything is at, guys. Uh, let's see, Kate Slater hit Wonderland. She posted a picture of her scale at 199.5. Congratulations, Kate. I know how important that is. I still remember the day that I broke 200. It was 199.8. And if I had had a confetti cannon, it would have went off in my house. <laughs> it was so monumental for me. And uh, for all of you who don't know what Wonderland is, it's, mean, it, it's when you cross from the twos to the ones. <clears throat> Chelsea Hawkins. Congratulations. She has lost 66 pounds since starting um, listening to the podcast and stuff. She says she's changed not only physically, but mentally. A fire has been ignited inside me that wasn't there for a long time. 
I was taking care of everyone but myself. I was surviving and now I am living. I also think that's really important too. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if all of you, is it, what is Rachel Hollis's new book? Um, Girl Stop Apologizing, I think it's the name of it. Um, I started listening to it this morning. I was going to listen to it yesterday. I didn't get a chance. I started this morning and I will say this, like I love Rachel Hollis's stuff. It's um, I think I find it very motivating. I know a lot of people will say things like, you know, it's nothing new and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I, I say this stuff all the time, but I love listening to it. I'm like, let her say it for the thousandth time. When my book comes out, I will probably be 1,432nd. Like, I, I don't think any of us are saying a ton of new shit. But we're saying we we are the we are willing to get our shit out there so that women can find the voice that rings true with them. Not only that, what I'm really liking about her book is she is just talking unapologetically about like wanting to change other people's lives. And that is how I feel. People will ask me all the time about, you know, the tribe and how big is it and stuff. It's like it's going to be as big as it needs to be until I can teach every woman how to lose weight. And feel good. Like, there we go. When when that job's done, I'll be done. Like, I am just, like, not going to apologize to any damn body ever in this world for wanting to help as many women as I can. And that's how I roll. All right. Kathy. Um, <laughs> Jennifer Clausen. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> I just saw that pop through. Let me find uh, questions. So how many people thinking thanking you, so many people are thanking me for being real and talking about your own tough day. Y'all are very welcome. I, um, <laughs> probably, like, it's so funny because Kathy texted me the other day and she was like, oh, I've just cried like five times a day anything. And I was sitting there going, what's wrong with her? Like, you know, in my mind, I'm just like, we gotta like get to work. And then today I'm just like, you know, this is cry number three and it's 849. <laughs> Is it normal to gain weight when you cut out sugar? Normally, no, but that doesn't mean that that's, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. I cut it out and had this issue, but when I added just a little back, I started losing again. Um, I, you know, if you've added it back in and you're losing weight, I'd probably just eat a little bit. Some, I ha Well, I will say this. I read something the other day. I don't even remember what it was. I was reading something the other day about... Some women just have to have a certain level of carbs in order to lose weight. Like, I, like I'm not like, trust me, y'all. I have zero interest in low-carb dieting, keto. I do not, like, promote any of that bullshit. I also don't, though, have any, um, like, problems with anybody who wants to do those things. My thing is I want you to do what you can do for the rest of your life. I want you to prioritize feeling good over mouth satisfaction. Like, we, we all don't need an orgy in our mouth every time we eat. But one of the things I do want for you is to be able to look at your body every day and have an orgasm. I want you to be able to uh, be able to go up the flight of stairs and be fucking proud of yourself that you're not winded anymore. Like, I remember the days, I remember the first time I got out of the floor with ease. And I was like, holy fuck, I've arrived. I remember one time I was at the mall with my husband and I was walking, um, like, I guess faster than usual because I'd lost some weight. And he was like, oh my God, you're walking so fast. And I was like, hell yeah. Like, I mean, just like, I want you guys like thinking bigger than just what you put in your mouth. So when it comes to like, you know, if you, if you need to um, add some in and you're seeing that your body's responding, that's exactly what I would do. I don't know what VCLD slash LCD is. Um, if somebody could tell me what the hell those initials mean, Kathy, I don't know what that means. Why do you think we will judge your sappy ass? Oh, only because the internet judges me all the time. <laughs> when you put your life on the internet, you are judged to like it's a religion. And I'm fine with it. I, I let people judge me all the time. I I just like whatever, but it's, um, you know, like when you're emotional though, 
it's just normal to like, you know, ooh, what are people gonna think? But I get over it pretty fast as you can tell. Do you drink your bulletproof coffee even if you are full? Does this apply to the two to two? Can't wait to join the tribe. Uh, I drink my bulletproof coffee in the morning, so I'm never full in the morning. Um, I drink it first thing. I have been, uh, honestly guys, I've been drinking about half the strength of it here lately. I have had a little bit of tummy issue. Um, nothing major. It's just, we are trying to find a coffee that is, we are trying some mushroom coffee right now to see if it's just the coffee we've been using. It tasted good, but it's kind of been upsetting my stomach a little. And I've been eating breakfast and I've been actually getting hungry for breakfast recently. So I've just been kind of been going with it. So if I do my coffee and I get hungry, I just, I just have, I just go ahead and eat. I'm just a real big believer in when you're hungry, eat. If your body is saying it's hungry, it's just time to eat. You know, put good stuff in there and junk, but don't be like, like I I love my coffee. Trust me, I love it. But I don't have hardcore rules. Like I'm not gonna sit there and be like, oh, I can't eat till 11. Now I had that coffee. If I'm hungry, I'm just gonna eat. When you are really good about listening to your body, and being like, oh, my body's telling me I need to eat a little something, and you just eat a little something, and you're responding, your body normalizes. Your body uh, likes that. That's how your body knows you're nurturing it. When you're eating when you're not physically hungry, your body does not like that. When you're ignoring it when it's physically hungry, it's okay, but your body typically doesn't like it if you do it all the time but your body wants to get physically hungry. I think that's the thing that I, I work so much with my tribe members on. They get very hung up on, you know, negative two and positive two. And it's like, I teach the hunger skill, but that's just a guide. The spirit of the law, guys, is really learning how to develop. And we talked about this in the workshop on Monday night. The spirit of the law is really becoming that normal eater that eating food isn't good or bad it's just am i hungry yes all right it's time to take care of myself and when you do it from a spirit that when you're eating and you learn how to develop the relationship with food that you're taking care of your body i don't not your emotions your body and any of my tribe members, if you're confused, just go watch the workshop. All the lessons are up now, and they're going in the private member podcast. Sadie's working right now, so she's probably getting them up this morning. Um, make sure you listen to that, because we want to teach our mind that when we're eating, this is how we care for ourselves physically. That is really important. Because what most of you are doing is doing a big ass job of teaching your brain that it can't trust food, it can't trust you, can't trust your body. That's like fucking annoying to yourself. It's gonna like drag you down. I'd also like to give a special message to someone. Uh, Miss Bethany Stallman, you, her husband, Corby, reached out and he asked if I could give you some encouragement. Um, she missed a goal by a half a pound. Girl, will you please just get over it and just go? Seriously, it's a half a pound. Your half a pound's coming. This is what I always like to say, guys. When you're, when you miss a goal, we don't get caught up in that we miss it. We need to get caught up in thinking, my goal's coming. It just didn't come on the timeline that I thought it would. How, did, how the fuck do you know when you plan? You don't know. Here's what you know. You know how you show up. You know all the bullshit that you do to get there. Be proud of that. Get worked up over that. Think about that. Do not get hung up, guys. When you set big goals, if you miss them by a little bit, then find your pride in what you did to almost get there. And then tell yourself, and the goal's coming. I just, I just uh, mismanaged my timeline by a week or two. That's fine. It's fine. Can I still be a tribe member if I work 3 to 11? I don't want to miss any of the lives. Oh, yeah. So, all of our live trainings, they happen all, the, all times of the day. So, like, some of them are, um, girls, when is my... 
My Thursday morning Q&A is at 9 a.m. My um, Sunday coaching is at noon. Um, let's see. I do the 6 o'clock Monday nights. And I do the motivational Friday motivator on Fridays at noon. So, there's like plenty of... Oh, and I also do a noon call on Wednesday. This is not including when I surprise them and bitch and rant. <laughs> so, let's just say... Number one, if you join the tribe and you're worried you will not see me, you need to put your worries to rest. You can just bury them six feet under because that's not going to happen. I, I like to use my mouth more than I like to use my fingers. Then, um, but the, the good thing is, is that we do, I do things at different times. And like we have a couple, of, like our coaches do some stuff also. So their things are at different times. We try to spread it out throughout the days because we have tribe members all over the world. Like, I got people in Australia. I got people, like, in, in Scotland. I mean, I have people all over the world. So, I try to mix it up so that um, tribe members from everywhere can, if they want to attend live. Now, I will say this. Out of all of our members, like, like we have, like, 32, 3,300 members. A typical live gets about 200 of them. Like, y'all always think that everybody's there. They're all there. It's like, no. You know who's there? The people that just want to watch it live. Everybody else does the replays. We do our website. Um, and guys, when we right before I open, I'm opening April 3rd through the 5th. I'm going to give you guys a tour of the website so you can see where everything is. And my South Africa people, good morning, Miss Melanie. Um, we, uh, we have a private member podcast so that you can listen on the go if you need to. We also record all of our videos and courses. They're inside the website. So at any time when you wanna go and you wanna watch them, you do them on your own time. So if you can't take something live, you just you just watch the recording. Uh, let's see, all right. Why can't I stick to my plan on the weekends? I keep blaming my husband because he loves eating out and having drinks. Well, the reason why you're not sticking to it is because you think it's his fault. It ain't his fault. Is he sitting there going, all right, we're going to go out to eat. And if you choose not to eat the nachos and drink the beer, then I'm going to hold you down on the table and shove that shit in your mouth. What are you going to do? No, that's not happening. You're using that as a convenient excuse. You need to, like, get honest with yourself. The reason why I'm not sticking to my plan on the weekends is because I'm not saying no to myself. Not him. You go with him. You order some shit. If you know he's going to want to go out and have drinks and stuff, you need to put some shit on your plan. Quit going and breaking your plans and blaming your husband. That's the habit you've developed. That's not a weight loss technique. It ain't going to work. So you need to either make a realistic plan for the weekends so that you're consciously doing it, or you need to say no to yourself. And you need to sit there and be like, he can have the drinks, and I can have the water. I go out with my husband sometimes, and I don't drink with him. Sometimes he goes out with me, and he doesn't drink with me. And guess what? We both love going out to eat, and we both love drinking. But I also don't want to have to buy a new wardrobe to go sit at the bar because my husband wants to have beer on a, like, Thursday night. So, like, it's just being willing to be like, yeah, you know, it's probably going to suck the first couple of times because I'm used to blaming him and not taking personal responsibility. And the moment I take personal responsibility, that might blow a goat, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm recovering from binging the past three days, hating myself. I'm a tribe member. Where do I begin again? You need to go to Ask Coaches first. Whoever this is, you need to go to Ask Coaches. You need to talk about this. Um, go make sure that you are listening to the, go to what and do the workshop. I talk a lot about the binging in the workshop, especially towards the end. I would, first you need to do your recovery worksheets. I would, if you've been binging for three days, you need to do the detailed recovery worksheets. You are not gonna want to. You are gonna have excuses. And it's all gonna be because you're in shame right now. It's all gonna be because you're hating yourself. You need to set that aside and just say, that shit's over and done with. Beating myself up is me delaying the process of figuring this out. That's all that's happening right now. And so do the recovery worksheets on each one of the binges. 
it, it, it will take you some time. But if you've got time to beat the shit out of yourself, you got time to do your recovery worksheets. I also would um, look at the Breaking the Chains worksheet that we just did in this program. It's really, really good. So I've updated this stuff. Look at the last, um, I would do the last binge you did and do the break in the chains and see what you can find. Then when you do those, I would put it in Ask Coaches and let the coaches work with you on it. I would really do that. Also, is today, what is today, Wednesday? If you want, on Saturday, Betsy has coaching office hours. Get on the call. There's open office hours. You don't have to make an appointment. Just show up on Saturday from noon to two and you can get coached. Just raise your hand. But bring your worksheets. Don't just come and be like, I'm in my shame shawl. Like, do some work. Like, you owe it to yourself to come to that call and say, this is what I've uncovered. I want to work on the problem with the binging. What most of you end up doing is you just keep reworking the, the shame of it. It's like, let's move on from that. That shame part is so optional. It really is. I know a lot of you are like, what? I, I, what? You may have made myself up as optional. It's like, yeah, it's optional. I'm not saying you're not going to like for a thousand times the next few days that you're going to be like, I wish I hadn't a binge. I shouldn't be a binger. This is a terrible thing. Blah, blah, blah. But you need to like set it aside each time. Just set it aside and just be like, I want to work on this stuff. Good morning, Deb. I want to work on this more than I want to beat myself up over it. Those are the thoughts I want you to adopt. Yeah, but do that work so that you can go to the coaching call ready to work on it. And then the other thing that I would do is uh, if you go over to the video replays, I know I'm giving you a lot of stuff, but I would rather give you too much work and keep your brain busy than to not give you enough and then your brain gets busy beating yourself up again. Go over to uh, pmptribe.com, go to the video replays, and then it, you're, there's a button for binge calls. Watch some of the binge calls. I have coached so many people on binging. You'll pick up some stuff too. Uh, how many people typically join the tribe at each opening? It changes every opening. It's, and it is hard to tell. Like this one is different because we're only going to be open for three days. So I don't know how many people will join. Um, if I had a crystal ball, it'd be amazing because then I could, you know, <laughs> know how many planners I have and all that stuff. So I always just end up over ordering everything. The last opening we had, I think it was like, I think we had right at 1,500 people join on the last opening. So we're growing. I will just say, everyone, um, I am very humbled and honored to be able to work with as many of you who want to work with us. And we are we are very dedicated to this tribe. I, um, I look at what other people do, and I think it's great and stuff. But one of the things I think has always been special about PNP is not just the community, but it's feeling like they're that people truly listen to you, whether it's our community members or coaches. I make sure that we prioritize like answering questions. Um, you know, like we do go live a lot. We have a lot of content for people to be able to listen at all times. I ask the tribe very often, like, what is it that um, really helps you? with your journey. And it's like, I listen to everything you put out. They're like, keep putting out the content. Like I tell them all the time, it's like, you don't have to listen to all the content and they don't listen to all the content. But I would rather put out too much content so that they, they want to listen five hours a day while they work so that the only thing they're hearing is positivity when it comes to losing weight, how to lose weight, how to change their mindset and stuff. I'd rather them have that than to just get like me once a month and then they're just left to figure it out. Like I'm just not gonna be that kind of tribe. So uh, I have recently had a real behavior change, writing and following 24 hour plan with small weight loss, scared to plan joy food as could affect weight loss, put on weight. Uh, the thing you want to practice is you don't want to practice fear around having some um, some exception foods. We call it exception food now inside the tribe. Uh, I would still, like, if you want to have a little bit more weight loss with your 24-hour plan, look for ways you can level up a few of your choices. 
you know, there's one option, but planning once a week to have something that you enjoy and learning how to have it without demonizing it, learning how to have it and in looking forward to it, learning how to have it and stopping when you're satisfied is a key skill to being able to keep your weight off for good. What I don't want you to do is sacrifice your ability to keep your weight off long-term and in maintenance for fear and short-term losses. Um, I've been binging on the podcast and really connecting to the content. I'm on the wait list for the tribe, but I'm stuck in the thought that it's another thing I'm trying to lose weight. It is another thing. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. I am one more thing. There's nothing wrong with that. So what are you going to do? Do like not try something? I mean, th just think about it. It's like, I, I think about this all the time because people are always so afraid to try to lose weight one more time. This week's, uh, this week is number 100 of our episodes. And we, I, I thought really hard about what I wanted to talk about in episode 100, and it was don't miss your magic moment. When I started losing weight, I had no idea that was the time. I was trying one more thing. Like, guys, I can never promise anyone that you are going to join the tribe and this will be your one thing. What I can promise is that if you quit trying, you'll never find it. That is a guarantee. So many of you are going to have to get over your fear of keeping on trying and adopting the mindset that the only reason why no other diet ever worked was because I chose to quit, not because diets don't work. You have to just keep working. Now, I do agree my program's a little different because I'm going to work your mental mindset up all the time. I mean, that's just what I do. I, <laughs> I promise you, you're going to come into the tribe and you're going to crave and desire and have an urge for a meal plan. You are going to want me to just tell you exactly what to do. Everybody always thinks they need to know what to do and then they'll just do it. And I'm like, I want you to challenge that thought right now. How many diets have you been on where they gave you an exact meal plan? They told you, here's the list of foods you cannot eat and you'll lose weight. Or Here's your box for the month. Eat all these foods and you will lose weight. Or your trainer who gives you a menu and says, if you will eat this, you will lose weight. No fucking person listen to me right now needs to know another how to lose weight. Not a single one of you. The problem is not in you needing more tactics and needing more hows. You need to figure out why you don't do them in the first place. Why you give up on them. Why you fear them. Why, why it's easier to just quit on yourself. Like you figure that part out, then it works. You start showing up for yourself. You want to show up for yourself. So like, you know, like when you ask me this, it's like, no, I'm not going to tell you that this is not going to be one more thing you're going to try. I'm not going to tell anyone ever that this is the one. Like I promise you. It's like, no, I'm not. You still have to come in. You still have to do the work. You still have to listen to the lessons. And you know what you have to do? You have to be willing to divorce your fat girl thinking. You have to be with, like, like, you know, what are you going to be willing to give up? Quitting. Eating spontaneously. You're going to have to be willing to plan. You're going to have to be willing to give up your idea that keto is the answer for you if you've had bombed it 50,000 times. You're going to have to be willing to give up your doubts and insecurities and trade them in for determination, for showing up anyway, for swallowing the vomit and pushing on forward. Like, that's what you have to do to lose weight. It's very little about the how. Um, the last week has been my first really rough spot since January. I'm scared I'll never get the hang of it again. It's the old on the diet off mentality. I'm having a hard time interrupting the cycle and behavior and thinking. You don't need, like you need to interrupt the thinking first. The behavior will come. Here's what I want you to tell yourself. 
If I could do it in January, there's no difference between January 1 through 10 and March 1 through 10. The behaviors are the same. The only thing that shifted is your thoughts about it. This is different. It's harder now because I've been doing it a while. Like all of that. But I'm going to tell you guys, when you've been experiencing success, you're going to have a period where you're going to want to go backward. That is always the period right before something starts becoming an automatic behavior. That's why it's so shaky and so raw right there. It's because it's like, are we sure we want to adopt this? Because we've quit so many times in the past. It's so much easier to go back to what we were doing and thinking. So I just want you to tell yourself, like, all I need to do is I need to list out the simple things that I was doing in the beginning. And I just need to think there is zero reason why that, that can't just continue. I don't have to be excited in order to do these things. I don't have to be super motivated in order to do these things. I just need to be willing. That's like all. But when you, when you have a belief that you're supposed to love every minute of it, be excited or ginned up or whatever, the second that it starts becoming a habit, that feels wrong. And you will go back to creating chaos so you can start over again and get that initial excitement and whatnot. You need to tell yourself, I do not need that stuff. All I need is to figure out what it is that I was doing then, do that stuff, and know that this time the emotion that's going to back it up will not be motivation, and it will not be excitement, and it will not be newness. What are the emotions that are going to fuel it this time? Willingness, determination. Find you an accountability partner in the tribe. Find someone who can check in like, I, I'm going to be accountable. I want to feel accountable and responsible. I'm going to check in with someone. I'm going to like put it out there what I'm doing. Um, I've been on so many diet plans. How do you get past the mind fuck of no, you can't eat that because it does. You have to do this or that. You have to fast, etc. I find that I have a jumble in my brain and I don't know where to turn. I'm I become obsessed. Yeah, we call it diet mentality. What I tell my girls is we're going to do this and we're going to say to all that other stuff. And that's not true. And that's not true. Like you need to just add at the end of each one of those sentences when you think you need to do this. And that's not true. Like seriously, you have to break in your brain that all of that stuff is true because then it won't be so jumbled. It'll be all into the bucket of untruths. The only thing that needs to happen, like guys, seriously, I could boil my entire weight loss program down into three words. Am I hungry? If you are not hungry, do not eat. Period. I guarantee you, the majority of you, if you just didn't eat when you weren't hungry, you could never have a single one of my other tools and probably lose 25 to 50% of your weight without doing anything else. You wouldn't need an app. You wouldn't need a plan. You wouldn't need anything. You'd need three words. The problem is, is that most of you will ask, am I hungry? And you'll say, no, but I want it. That's where I come in. But if you can do it on your own and just be like, all right, I'm never, ever, ever, ever eating again unless I'm physically hungry, problems are solved. Um, would love to know about how you approach planning your work day. How granular do you get? I, I do blocks, so I don't get super granular. Um, I right now use, if you go to my kit store, it's kit.com slash fit and fat, P-H-I-T-N-P-H-A-T. I use Brendan Burchard's planner right now. Um, and I do a little bit of bullet journaling. So I have like a separate little journal that has like just blank pages in it. But usually, um, let me pull up, let me get, grab it. So like I will do like, like it looks, you know, kind of like this. You see how there's like big time blocks? So what I do is I read a book. Um, I would do not recommend it anymore because everybody told me they didn't like it. But if you want to read it, you can <laughs> <laughs> it's Robin Sharma's 5 a.m. Club. 
So what I do is I do 90 minute work blocks in the morning and then I do two to three 60 minute work blocks in the afternoon and I take a small break in between those. And then I start my day with, um, like I get up at 4.30 in the morning and I start my day with um, exercise, personal development, planning my day, planning my food, just like Corinne time. But I get up super early in order to have that because it just helps my mindset, really helps my mindset. So I, um, and then plus I commute and like do things and, and, and I, and I'm, We'll just say, guys, I love to work, so I do work a lot. Um, I don't really take days off. I rarely take a full day off. Um, I almost always work seven days a week, um, but I enjoy it. I just, it's hard to uh, take off from something you absolutely love. It would be like me saying, you know, I'm just going to take off from my child or my husband. Like, I feel like PNP is ever bit as my baby and my husband as my family is, you know, so... I do work a lot, but I work in chunks. So what I do is I pick out the top three things that need to get done each day, and I limit myself to three. So those are the things that I know will be accomplished. And so in those blocks, I put those three things in so that I make sure those get done. And then over on the other side, I'll have like extra tasks. So when there are, like if I, let's say I have a 90 minute block and I only have 60 minutes of work and I finish early, then I throw some of those tasks in there. So that's kind of how I do my day. But the majority of my planning is like, like I map things out. I also, for the month, I come up with like, this is what I'd like to accomplish for the month. Um, well, not would like, what I will accomplish for the month. So I think about things on a monthly and quarterly basis. And then I break things down each week. I always have a weekly preview where I look at the week and um, the projects from my tribe I'm gonna get done for the week. Uh, and then I just start scheduling. So that's kind of how I do it. I don't know, I, we're getting ready to do a planning course later um, in a couple months in the tribe where I'm gonna actually do a lot of like this, a planning system. I'm playing with different things and stuff right now, but um, in general, that's how I do it. So every day I wake up and plan. Once a week, I look at the week. Once a quarter, I plan the quarter, and then I also do like a recap and whatnot of my month. You can do the same thing with your weight loss, guys. You can think about your quarter for the weight loss. Like if you want to do like any kind of exercise goals, if you want to learn how to cook new foods or anything like that, then you can do the same thing. Like so this month, of all the things I want to do this quarter, here's what needs to get done this month. And then you know each week how to plan, and then each day you're pulling pieces from that week. Um... I made great progress from, oh, I think I already did this one. All right, well, I did one very similar to this one. I'm confused about eating at night. If I'm hungry, do I sit in discomfort and get used to not eating after dinner or plan for it? I feel like I've heard coaching calls go either way. Here's how I always tell people to, to like think about it. You can do either one, but you're not going to eat without it being on a plan. So in the beginning, you can do both. You can plan for food in the evening, and if you're not hungry, then you're gonna sit in the discomfort even though it's on your plan. Or you can not plan and just get used to not eating at night. It's up to you, but whatever happens is like, you're not gonna eat when you're not hungry. So if you plan food and you're not hungry, you're just not gonna eat. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But that's how I like that's how you need to think about it. It's like put it on your plan if you want, and it's there if you get hungry, and then you can have it, or put it on your plan. If it's time to eat and you're not hungry, guess what? You're not gonna have it, but there will be discomfort because a lot of you want to eat it because it's on the plan. It's like, no, am I hungry is a rule. I struggle with depression. My mind just shuts down. Do you have any go-to thoughts to get yourself back up and going? <sighs> Basically, my big one is just like, I'm figuring it out. Like I, I have, like I've always talked about, you may wanna go to my um, depression episode. I've got a full um, podcast I did just on my depression. Maybe one of the girls can, um, uh, Maybe one of the girls can um, point you to that one. It's a Facebook Live I did about a year ago where I talk about my depression and what my minimum baselines are and stuff for that. I think that would be super helpful. Um, body shaming is ingrained deep. 
then it almost negative 62 pounds. The body is smaller, but when I look, I see my overly flappy arms and lower belly. I don't want to. How did you overcome that? You have to start like not allowing yourself to think those things. Like seriously, they're going to come in. They're going to, you're going to think shady things and you have to like accept that that's going to happen for a long time. The difference is, is that you decide to stop believing them. So when that happens, you say like, I have arms, I've lost 62 pounds, we're moving on today. Thinking about my body in a negative way does not get my oxygen anymore. Like that's what you do to start. It's And the other thing is to t quit telling yourself that your body shaming is ingrained deep. You have thoughts. Like, let it just be that neutral. Otherwise, if you think it's ingrained deep and it's like part, like some burden you bear and stuff, it's very hard to give it up. You want to just like neutralize it as much as possible. It's like, I have thoughts about my body. I've had them for a while. That's okay. I'm working on new ones. And then you move into whenever you notice them, redirecting yourself to be like, I've lost 62 pounds. We're moving on today. Like, you don't have to, guys, in order to like heal your relationship with your body, especially for all of us that have lost a lot of weight. You don't have to sit there and be like, sexy beast, here I am. You don't have to start there. You know, like when I talked about in the beginning, we got to start where we're at. Start where you're at. Where you're at is someone who's lost 62 pounds, who's working on changing the conversation she has about her body. That is where you are. You do not need to like, like I am just not a big proponent of telling myself like, the most amazing unicorn thoughts at first. I just want to get out of like the shitty ones. And then once I'm out of the shitty ones, then I can start layering in my unicorn thoughts because my unicorn thoughts will be more believable if I don't believe I'm just inherently bad or inherently flabby or inherently like whatever. Um, I feel like I need to master the free program before joining the tribe thoughts. You don't have to master the... Most people join the tribe because they can't master the free program. <laughs> and that's fine. You know, the, the part of the, the... The difference, guys, between the free program and being in the tribe is that you don't need to earn your way in. Like, I'm not asking you guys to earn your way into the tribe. And you don't need to tell yourself that you need to do that. It's like, I need to make it harder on myself. Let me do it all by myself. Let me just keep repeating the pattern that somehow I can't lose weight until I've jumped through some hurdles. Or I, I don't owe it to myself to just take the, the fastest route to fixing this unless I do these things. Like, I just never like that mindset. And it isn't just leaving with me. It's like, I can't stand it when people say they don't get to um, practice self-care until they lose X amount of weight. I can't be happy until I lose X amount of weight. It's like, no, you don't. Like, if you want to join my tribe or you want to go get your nails done or whatever, this should never be contingent upon your weight loss. You're either doing stuff for yourself or you're not, period. Like, leave it at that. Now, if you want to, like, do, like you got a month to work on the free course, but I wouldn't say the only way that I can get help. Like, if you, for a month, work on my free course and it's not working, you probably should join so you can figure out what, what is your mental block on doing the free stuff. I mean, that just makes sense. But you also could do the free course for a month and then join and throw kerosene on the fire to boot. Either way. But y'all gotta quit late. We are not dogs, guys. We, we cannot keep treating ourselves in a way where we're like, I don't know. I just hate the way that we all sit around and think we can't have things and we don't deserve things unless we do stuff around our weight. It's like we have to quit making it be the, you know, what do they call that? Like the obstacle or the cross we bear. It's like it's our weight. Do you want to like have it as the cross you bear or do you want to start thinking about becoming like the next version of you? Like, I love the version of me that was overweight. She was funny. She set the groundwork for everything that I have done. If I had not been overweight, and I had not went through all of that, would never be where I am today. Like, you just don't know what your weight loss is doing for you. Quit assuming that it's just a cross you bear. 
And it, that is, I know, hard to believe, but it's also something that you can just choose to believe. And you will get further with creating the life you want if you quit acting like the life you have is so shameful and terrible and stuff. Guys, it's really hard to like move out of that. You guys are never gonna shame your way into weight loss. It does not happen. When you feel shame, what do you normally do? Eat. Most of you don't feel like, I feel so much shame. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go out and diet now. Woo, and I'm gonna stick to it because I got all my shame with me. That doesn't happen. Most of you sit around and you're in this perpetual mode of beating yourself up. You beat yourself up for being overweight. You beat yourself up for overeating. You beat yourself up for the kind of mother you are. You beat yourself up for all these things. And you think that somehow that that's all going to lead you to losing your weight. No. It's compiling on the mental weight. And when you carry a lot of mental weight, it manifests itself on the outside. We have to start divorcing our mental weight. That is how I lost my weight. I started changing the conversation I was having. And guys, I was overweight all my life. I know it's not easy, but at some point, you have to be more invested in changing the conversation than you have to be changing whether or not you're eating um, out every day. I was willing to take it slower and figure out how to create the life I wanted so that I would never have to lose my weight ever again. I made that trade, and I will never, ever regret it. I wanted to lose my weight and not have to do it again. I wanted to, like, I just remember dreaming about, like, sitting there thinking, I just want to be one of those normal, healthy people. Like, I want to be the kind of person that looks forward to exercising. I want to be the kind of person who's, like, excited about eating healthy. Because I've never been that way. I had only used food to soothe me, to comfort me, to entertain me, to whatever. And I wanted to become the kind of person that just was like, you know, like I love the idea that I can scroll Pinterest and get excited about healthy recipes. Like that's one of the favorite things about me. It's like, ooh, let's try this. I love like whenever I go to the grocery store, like the other day I went to the grocery store and I bought so much fruit because I wanted it. I remember the years when I would go to the grocery store and I was buying sugar, the hot 24 sugar cookies, cookie dough, and potato chips. I like now that I go to the grocery store and enjoy getting those things and get just as much excitement now. The shit didn't happen overnight. But it took me dreaming about the person I wanted to be rather than sitting around focused on the person I hated that I was. We gotta spend more time dreaming about who we want to be. Everybody that has, um, everybody that has tribe questions, I'm not gonna answer any more of them. There will be plenty of tribe questions answered um, when we get closer to the opening. I know you guys are wanting to know all the things. But just get on the wait list. If you go over to pnptribe.com, infor there's information on that page now about the tribe, what, what happens, what we do, and all that stuff. And you will get information and email about it. So I just want to like put that out there. Just go to pnptribe.com and get on the wait list so you can get the information. Because um, I don't I like to use this as time to be able to help as many people as I can who may never join the tribe. Um, and not just answer lots of questions about the tribe. How do I continue to have the same momentum losing weight after I've hit a goal of about 20 pounds? It seems like my brain says, yay, now I can eat a little of this or don't have to watch what I'm eating as much. The way to keep the momentum is to know that that's going to happen. That's just a pattern that you've established. And so what you need is you need your 20 pound plan. So once I, once I hit 15 pounds, here are the things I'm likely to tell myself and here's what I'm going to start telling myself and here's what I'm going to do. You need to just understand that's just an established uh, pattern that you have and a lot of us do it because the next 20 pounds means you have to keep going when it's not sexy and new. You're looking for sexy and new. That's why you start adding a little bit of grab ass in there with your food. I'm a special needs mama uh, who puts her child uh, first 
How do you get past this? Emotionally eat out of frustration or concern. It soothes and comforts me. How did you pass this stage? The biggest thing is I you have to quit telling yourself that when you're emotionally eating, that it's soothing or comforting you. It's not doing either one of those. You need to like tell yourself the truth. That's one version of the truth you're telling yourself. What The version of the truth you need to tell yourself is I'm avoiding dealing with my emotions around my child. The best way that I got over a lot of it was really understanding all the thoughts I had about my child, all the fears that I had about my child, all the, um, the guilt, the like whatever it was, and being okay with that. Most of us eat because we don't want to be the kind of mom who gets tired with their special needs kid. Like I, I did a lot of uh, work with me on like, um, you know, the, and, and I talk about this really raw and honest and, you know, and I sometimes I have to watch and I, I talk more about this inside the tribe because on my public podcast, you know, my over the years I've been so open and honest and my son has recently read lots of that stuff. And he asked me, it was a couple of years ago, he asked me, was it still as painful? Well, that was a hard moment. <laughs> but, you know, it's just the thing that I, that I remember and I tell myself is I just love him. And I'm like every mother, if you don't love every moment of your child, <laughs> it doesn't mean you don't like them and stuff. You still love them unconditionally. But you're human. And you're going to be frustrated, and you're going to be scared, and you're going to be bored at times, and you're going to want to do things for yourself, and all of that is okay. But there's nothing wrong with those moments. And for me, and I still cry on it, but for me, that really helped me quit eating over it. It really helped me to quit beating myself over it, being mentally exhausted over it, just having some acceptance that, it's not all supposed to be fun and games. I have plenty of friends like who have kids, like what I just call normal kids who play the sports and do all the things. And they're just as frustrated with their kids as I am most days. <laughs> they're just as worried about them. Just like we think because our kids have special needs that we have some kind of special, um, you know how I always talk about the shame shawl? Well, we have some special worry shawl we get to, you know, like, oh, you don't, you don't need to worry. It's like... Thinking that way has never helped me. So I quit thinking that. It's just normal. It's just normal. And so I think just allowing yourself to know that like when you're eating, just tell yourself, I'm eating for me. Like this is not soothing or comforting. This is avoidance. Just being really honest when you're doing it is always more helpful. I tell the tribe all the time, it's like, Guys, I don't care if you're going to overeat. I don't care if you're going to binge. I don't care what you're doing. I just don't want you doing it anymore, telling yourself lies. Always tell yourself the truth. It changes the entire eating experience. You offer yourself choice. It's a lot harder to do the overeating when you're telling yourself the truth. When you're telling yourself bullshit like that, you can talk yourself right on into it. No problems. So... All right, listen to the podcast, everybody. Losing 100 pounds with Fit and Fat. You can go to fit, P-H-I-T, dot click, slash podcast. Make sure you take the free course over at fitandfat.com, P-H-I-T, hyphen N, hyphen P-H-A-T, dot com, slash sign up now. And the wait list is open. We uh, The sales page is open. I call it the sales page because all of you are like, how much does it cost? What do I get? All kinds of stuff. It's all on there. There's testimonials. Shit that my my tribe members have said. There's how much it costs. I have put the entire program on there. Um, I even give you a peek into like what orientation is like. And a site tour, I think. I don't know if there's a site tour. I don't know. A coaching session of how to plan or something like that. I don't know. I have all kinds of things on there. It will help you make your decisions. So if you need help doing that, go on over there and you can see it all now. Um, and then uh, we will open April 3rd through the 5th and that's it. So there are some goodies coming to everyone who's on the wait list. I'm gonna be uh, doing a few special trainings this month. They're just gonna be like one-off trainings. And if you miss it, I'm gonna be giving everybody a page for uh, just for, it, it comes out probably in two weeks. 
but it's just going to have some trainings on it to kind of like teach you what you need to know if you're wanting to start losing weight. Like what are the foundations, you know, what's likely to get in your way and all that kind of stuff. Think of it as uh, the podcast Supercharged. And then I'll be sending that out to all of those that are on the wait list. So make sure you're on it. And then as I do trainings, you'll be invited to live trainings and you'll get the replays on that page so you can watch them. And then on April 6th, I'll take all of it um, back down. So it's kind of it's kind of like my gift to everyone so that you guys can just make the right decision for you. You know, I'm not saying my program's perfect or the best one out there or anything like that, but I let my tribe members speak for me. Um, it just is a, it's a special place to be. And I can promise you, I poured my heart and soul into it and so do my coaches and the one thing you won't have to worry about is that um, that we aren't here because we are dedicated to making sure your life can change just like ours has. So, all right, guys, y'all have a good one. I will talk to you next week. Bye, y'all.